You know, it wasn't one day I just woke up and decided that this was what I was gonna do for the rest of my life. It really was never anything that I had planned. It just more or less happened. And I think the reason it happened the way it did is because I was so young when I first got into it. I'm Brian Stiles, owner of Premier Entertainment, I'm a local St. Louis balloon artist, and I make balloon sculptures for a living. I was around 13 years old, first got interested in it, but before that, I was interested in magic as a, as a child. This illusionist is only 14 years old. Brian Stiles grew to love magic while he was in grade school and he's never looked back. Now he's looking forward to becoming the next David Copperfield. I started doing a few shows. I did some things at like kids' parties. I did a couple daycare events. really wanting to add something that would be fun for the kids. So that's really where the balloons kind of came along. I just tried to put myself out there as much as possible. I started performing at restaurants. That was a huge success for me. They would just have like a kid's night at the restaurants. I'd start twisting balloons and making balloons for everybody. We started getting requests. People were saying, oh, hey, do you know any hypnotists? Do you know anybody that does stilt walking? Do you know jugglers? Just a, a wide array of other, other entertainers. Well, and I didn't at the time. But as that went on, you know, being at these different events and festivals, you see other people and you meet other people. And so I started collaborating with everybody and just kind of essentially building it into a small network of entertainers that I saw were the best of the best. So March 16th is the day that I consider everything to kind of fall apart with my business. More on the impact of the coronavirus on business around the world. Small businesses who keep less inventory on hand may be hit even harder. The outbreak is impacting small businesses at a time when optimism is near record highs according to the... So we had bookings for the next two months and within a few days after March 16th, everything on the books was canceled. Nobody knew what was going on. You know, there was so much uncertainty in the world. I couldn't, I couldn't blame anybody, but I had to figure something else out. I mean, this is what I've been doing since, since I've been 13 years old. This is it. In this instance, when everything did happen, it was kind of a good thing. I talked with a friend of mine that lives in Texas, and he was mentioning this idea of contactless balloon deliveries. It was really simple. We would create something if you had a birthday party that you had to cancel, if you had a graduation that you had to cancel, if you had a school event that you had to cancel. We would essentially create something custom and deliver it to your front doorstep to help cheer up and brighten up that day for the lack of being able to have the event. It's a really good idea. So wrote up a quick blurb on Facebook. Within five minutes, my inbox was overflowing with messages wanting me to create something to brighten up, you know, either their day or their loved one's day. This went from having one of the busiest times of years for events and that, and then losing everything, and then going right back at it. And there was so much uncertainty when this all started. So I was taking absolutely every single precaution that I could possibly imagine. My hands are what I use to create the sculptures. I'm gonna have to touch the balloons at some point in time. So I made sure that I washed my hands thoroughly before creating any creations. Then we would bag up all the balloons the evening before. That way nobody would touch the balloons for at least 15 hours before it's been delivered. We would send them a message when we're on the way, drop off the balloons on the front porch, Send him another message. I didn't even want to ring the doorbell because I didn't want to have any sort of contact in any way. 
So, I mean, as far as keeping everything safe, that's kind of what we, what we did mainly. When I first started this, I thought maybe I'll have two, maybe three people reach out to me. I thought just a few friends would say, hey, let's, let's help them out. It's a hard time for everybody. Let's, let's order something. But this really blew up. And I think part of the reason that I was able to work the way I was working is because I wasn't expecting that. I really wasn't expecting it. It just happened so fast. I didn't have time to really sit down and think about it. I had to handle everything spur of the moment. The whole time when I was first starting everything, I was just mainly concerned about trying to keep this business afloat. I mean, that was my number one priority is, you know, I need to survive. I need to be able to pay my bills. It's, you know, it's just, that's how my mind is just wired that way. But in doing all of this, I noticed kind of like something that was even more meaningful. And that is just the joy and the, and the excitement that I had brought to people that were just wanting a balloon animal. I mean, you know, I'll be the first person to say that it's just, it's just a balloon, but I could not believe how many people were just unbelievably thrilled. I mean, thrilled about receiving something that I could make and just deliver to them during a time of such uncertainty. There. <laughs> that was almost like the turning point to where I realized that this was more than just more than just making balloons. And there was something else to this that that I just kind of totally overlooked. The only thing that keeps me going is just knowing that I'm bringing so much joy to people. Again, when I first started this, the idea was just to create balloons for as many people as I could. But after I saw that video, after I saw the way that that child reacted to the balloon, even when I wasn't there, that really, I would say that's probably my strongest motivation. To know that even though I'm not there, I don't see exactly what's, you know, what they're going to be looking when they open the bag and see their reaction. Just knowing, um, that's what keeps me going. I normally have a whole team that helps me out. I have an event coordinator. We have other balloon artists. We have face painters. We have some magicians. That kind of all had to get pushed aside while this was going on because, you know, we weren't allowed to meet with people. We weren't allowed to socialize. We weren't allowed to be with groups. It kind of did become a one-man show with this, which, again, without, without having that workaholic uh, attitude, I don't think would have been possible. But it was just it's just a matter of just getting out there and doing what what I needed to do to, to keep my business alive and keep it going. <laughs> <laughs>